Hello, everyone. You're listening to Unlocking Greatness podcast with Zendra Glass. Feel free to call me Z. Today's podcast uh, episode is going to be called Impossible, just the word impossible. And I want to talk about that because that's so described my life and so many events and things I've been through. And I pray that with what I'm about to share, this is going to greatly change your life and help you. Um, I got the idea from this because I was in a staff meeting yesterday with my crew and every blue moon it's not often, but every now and then, We have one of those meetings where there's a pretty big task ahead of them that they have to do, especially if it's something um, that's very technical and something that pretty much is not being done in the industry yet or or. Um, something that is, is, is a little bit outside of the norm. And I had a meeting with my team and I said, um, here's what I'd like to see happen. Here, here's something I think that we should be able to do. And my team basically said, uh, Z, that really can't be done. And I says, well, why not? And my team said something like, well, no one else out there is really doing that. And um, uh, I, I, we just can't do that. And I said, uh, and I'm going to be very forward with you guys. I said, um, well, I hired very intelligent people. I know that you all can figure it out. And tomorrow when we meet, um, I need for you all to please have a solution. And and you might think, okay, Z, wow, that's a little harsh to tell your team. But first of all, first of all, my team knows I love them. I, I sincerely can say that I love my staff. I absolutely love them. But they also know that I challenge and call them higher. And I'll, I'm going somewhere with this if you follow me a minute. My entire life has been overcoming objections and overcoming roadblocks and dealing with what other people would say is the impossible. So naturally, there's something in the way that God built me, and I know many of you are like this as well, that when I hear someone say, whether it's a team member or someone say that can't be done, there's something automatically that comes out of me that defies that. Does that make sense? There's so, it, it just happens naturally. There's something that comes up out of me and say, wait, 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 wait. So before we say something can't be done, how about let's take another step back and let's look at this and let's talk about what are possibilities. Because I, I, I see what most people see as this is impossible right, or this can't be done. But that defines my whole life. That defines my entire life. Now, if you've been following my podcast, I've talked about so many situations and stories, and some of you are shaking your head because you're like, Z, I know what you're talking about. You've you've talked about a number of things. Every situation in my life, from from being from the time that I was young and some of the things I've talked about to, you know, the businesses I've gone into, to even starting this podcast, every single thing in my life and every time there's been a major move made, I've always had people in my ear or in my corner. And that doesn't mean that they're bad people. I want to make that clear. Does not mean that they're bad people as well at, at all. It just means, at least for me, they don't see the vision that's been given to me. And see, this is what I want to leave you with. And I hope that you grab this. If you only listen to a few minutes of this podcast, here's what you got to understand. Not everyone is going to have that vision that was given to you. I did a podcast on that a while ago, so I'm not going to, um, it's taken everything in me to not go down that road. But you guys know that I did a podcast a while ago on not everyone um, is going to be able to follow that same vision that was given to you. Remember we talked about, uh, was it Joseph that had the dream? and how his brothers got jealous of him and all of that and sold him into slavery. Remember all of that? And, and we, so I don't want to go back down that road, but you guys get it. And some of you that's listened to my podcast, you know what I'm referring to. So I want to kind of pick up from there and take this from a different angle. If someone doesn't have the vision that you have, you can't get upset with them because they feel it's impossible or, why, or how can you make that happen? How can you do that? That's almost like them say, you know, people saying to me, I remember uh, many years ago when I started up another staffing division and when I was coming out of a very bad financial turn and some friends that really thought they meant well that was saying, well, Z, how can you do that? That's impossible. First of all, you don't have an office. You got to have a finance. You got to have a crew. You got to buy. You don't have clients. You're gonna, I mean, they just because for them. And where they're at in their faith and, and, and from their experiences, and again, doesn't mean that they're bad. That's what they saw and they were just given their opinion. Does that make sense? Now, little old me, because my entire life has been uh, overcoming uh, the impossible, I saw that as opportunity. That, okay, I know to the average person it's going to look impossible, but the devil is alive. He thinks he's going to stop me from doing what I know that God has put in my heart to do. Does that make sense?
So when I had my little staff meeting and I was with um, some of my team members and, and it was, I wish I can go into detail, but I just can't, but it was a pretty important project and it really involved some technical things that really you don't quite see out there in the industry. Um, and I said to them, you know, I, I hired pretty intelligent people. I know you guys are going to figure it out. And they said, but Z, but no one's doing that. Like it's actually just not done. I don't even know. I go, well, let's do some research and figure it out. Let's come up with a creative way to make it happen. And so that meeting literally went from Z, it's impossible. No one's doing it. Um, we don't know how we can do it to guess what happened when I went into work uh, today. Sure enough, my team had figured it out and not only figured it out, done an amazing job, I do have to say, and I was very pleased uh, with what they came up with and how exactly what I visioned and, and what I wanted for this new project that they're working on was done. And it's just that's just one example that's actually happened a couple times uh, in my workplace. I don't talk a lot about what goes on in my workplace. Um, I, I try to come on here and not be in a mode of um, I don't know. I, I just try to keep in many ways my um, I, I guess I should say my my business life uh, separate from what I do here. And that's another subject I'll get into a little bit later because God is really calling me and challenging me to do some things on a higher level. And I can't wait till I have the 100th episode to reveal to you what God has told me to do. And when he gave it to me to do it, I moved immediately, immediately and set some things in action um, for what I'm going to be doing differently starting from the 100th episode and on. That's another subject. So let me go back to what I was talking about. My team went from Z, that's impossible. It literally cannot be done. Like they were adamant to the very next day when I challenged them uh, uh, to do it, to figure it out, uh, they figured it out. And I thought that was amazing. So when I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about today, I actually didn't have um, a topic on my mind. Um, and if I can be very honest with you, God is feeding me so much the next level he wants me to take things and what he wants me to do. I was actually very involved uh, with just taking notes and listening to what God was telling me he wants me to do from my 100th episode on. But anyway, um, so then when I uh, decided I'm going to do a recording, uh, God just put in my heart, talk about what happened yesterday. So that's why I went into talking about impossible. So anyway, let me relate this to the Bible. Here's what's so amazing about this. There's a story in the Bible and uh, I want you guys to turn to Numbers chapter 13. This is, this is really good. This is going to help you. I want to help people who feel like whatever has been put on their heart to do, they've either been told that it's impossible, can't happen, um, or they feel themselves that it's impossible. And I want to just kind of share with you um, uh, God's perspective on that when um, we give away to fear or perhaps influence from other people and we don't do what he's put in our heart to do. And I know for a fact this is going to bless someone today because I wasn't prepared to talk about this and I believe God allowed that situation to happen for a reason uh, in my own life uh, with my team and, and I believe it's going to be a blessing. Let's turn to Numbers 13. I'm just going to go over this briefly. But remember when Moses um, uh, led the Israelites out of Egypt, right? Uh, and uh, they were promised to go into the promised land. Remember that? So are some of you aware that before they got into the promised land, which many of them didn't, by the way, that's a whole nother story by itself, which I'll talk about in a minute. But are you aware that they sent some people to check out the land um, that they knew that God promised to deliver and give to them? So imagine you're wandering around in the desert. You've been freed from, you know, all the slavery and things that you went through. You're following this man named Moses. And now Moses has these these guys. I'm not going to read through all the names. Go and check out this land that they are supposed to be taken over. So follow me on this because this is really good. Numbers 13, I'm just going to read a little and I'm going to jump around. So you just got to follow me. Um, it, it, in, in chapter 13, verse 1, it says, The Lord said to Moses, Send some man to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. Okay? Each from ancestral tribe uh, send one of his leaders. And then there's a long list of the people that was sent. I won't read through all of that. And then it goes on to talk about, um, Ho, um, I don't know how to pronounce it, Hoshea, son of Nun, um, the name, he gave him the name uh, Joshua. So in, in verse 17, listen to this. When Moses sent them all to explore Canaan, he said, go up through the Negev and on, and on into the hill country. Um, see what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak. So he has them checking out the lands. Follow me on this. 
I'm going to read that again. Verse, um, I'm in Numbers 13. And I'm sorry I'm going so fast. I need to slow down. Sometimes when I'm, I don't know, when God gives me something I'm, and I'm in the Word, it's not that I'm reading because I'm in a rush. It's just that there's something in me that starts skipping. And I get so pumped and so excited. Sometimes I'm talking faster than I should. So I apologize and I'll try to slow down a little bit. But Numbers chapter 13. Um, I'm going to start in verse 18. Um, it says, see into the hill country. Um, see what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Are they unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? Are there trees on it or not? Do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land. It was the season for the first ripe grapes. Okay, so does that make sense so far? Um, they've been promised uh, that this land is theirs, and Moses is sending some people to basically, you know, check it out. So verse 21, so they went up and explored the land from the desert of Zen as far as Rohab towards Lebo Hamath. They went up through the Negev, and then it just talks about all the places they went. Uh, verse 23, they cut off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes. Two of them carried it on a pole between them, along with some pomegranates and figs. Now, those have to be some very, 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 very large grapes in order for a couple people to have to carry a cluster uh, on some poles. That just tells you how ripe the land was. So follow me a minute, okay? I'm going to jump on down a little bit. Um, let me see. Maybe I should go down to uh, verse 26. They came back to Moses. So, okay, they went and checked out the land. Now, this is where you really got to follow this for those who are trying to um, uh, really be encouraged by this topic. Verse 26, they came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Hmm. Here's the fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We saw descendants of Anak there. The Amicalites lived in the Negev, and then they just go on and on and on to talk about all the people they saw. And then in verse 30, here's what I like about Caleb. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. Verse 31, but the men who had gone up with him said, we can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the, the Nephilim there. Uh, the descendants of Anak came from the, let me turn my page, from the Nephilim. Uh, and that's a whole nother subject all by itself I won't get into because those people were considered to be like giants. I'll just leave it right there. Um, we seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes and we look the same to them. So they're saying not only are they powerful, are they strong, they have uh, walls, the city is fortified, they're saying there's some big people there, and not only uh, do we look like grasshoppers in our own eyes, but to them we look the same. Interesting. That night, I'm in chapter 14 now, all the people of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. So they crying, and, and I, I want to say another phrase, but I just won't, won't, won't say it. I was going to say acting up. Anyway, uh, in, 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 in verse 2, all the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, if only we had died in Egypt or in this desert, why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, uh-oh, we should choose a leader and, and go back to Egypt. Hold on. Let me make sure I'm following this. We won't even get into how they was treated. Go back and read that stuff yourself. We've covered that and you have your own Bible because I'm no one's minister. So read it for yourself with the mess that they went through. So because someone, so now that they're freed from slavery, think about that in our own lives. Now that God has delivered us from some mess we used to be in, delivered me from when I was a teenager with my mom and my, my siblings when we were homeless downtown um, without a penny to our name, delivered us through such abuse and things we went through. Another subject, get into it later and some I've already talked about. 
But now that we've been freed and God has pointed them into this direction to go, they're literally saying, I may as well go back to what I was doing before. I may as well go back to that. That's better than where I'm at now. All because somebody gave them bad reports and put fear in their hearts and told them this is impossible. I hope you're following this because I don't know, maybe it's just me getting excited by myself. It's kind of weird. I'm just speaking into a camera and nobody, you know, anyway, it's just weird. It's not like there's an audience in front of me, but I don't know if it just excites me, then I guess it just excites me, but I'm gonna keep reading because this, this is better to me than watching any movie. Anyway, I know I'm rambling. You guys just follow me. I think I've gotten way too comfortable with you guys now. Uh, where was I at? Um, I think I was in Numbers chapter 14. I'll just start back over reading that part. Um, that night, all the people of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And the whole assembly said to them, if only we died in Egypt or in this desert, why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And then they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Really? Verse five. Then Moses and Aaron fell face down in front of the whole Israelite assembly gathered there. Hmm. So I'm going to uh, jump on down to verse seven. Um, and this is what they, they said. The land we passed through um, and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he would lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not be afraid of the people of the land because we will swallow them up. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid. OK, I think that was Caleb or someone who said that in verse 10. But the whole assembly, here we go, talked about stoning them. So you're going to you, you literally going to try to stone the people that's trying to give you some faithful words. Then the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of the meeting to all the Israelites. The Lord said to Moses, how long will these people treat me with contempt? Please listen to this part for the few that's probably still listening, because I know I don't know. Nowadays, with social media, people only listen to. I don't know, three, four minutes, and then they, I don't know, just can't handle it anymore. But for the few people that are still listening, please pay uh, careful attention to this part. Because this, this is pretty serious. I'm in chapter 14 of Numbers, verse 11. The Lord said to Moses, how long would these people treat me with contempt? How long would they refuse to believe in me? In spite of all the miraculous signs I've performed among them. I will strike them down with a plague and destroy them. But I will make you into a greater nation and, and stronger than they. Then it goes on to talk about, I'm, I'm trying not to read too much into it, but basically God had just had enough. And Moses pretty much had to remind, uh, in essence, remind God of his promises. In verse 15, because uh, God was just like, I'm done with y'all. And in verse 15, um, Moses sa says to God, if you put if you put these people to death all at one time, the nations who have heard this will say, uh, um, this report about you would say the Lord was not able to bring these people into the land he promised them on oath. So he slaughtered them in the desert. So this is Moses like appealing to God. I think it was Moses saying this. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, it was Moses uh, appealing to God, basically saying, come on, come on, Lord, don't do that. Don't do that. Because 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 you already said you was going to deliver us and people going to say you wasn't a person of your word if you if you wipe us all out. So then it goes on down in verse 18. The Lord is, the Lord is slow to anger, abounding in love and forgiveness and forgiving sin and rebellion. Um, uh, then it just goes on to talk about yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. And then it goes on to talk about how uh, what he did. So let me let me drop down a little bit more. Um, in verse 20, the Lord replied, I've forgiven them as you ask. Um, but in verse 22, he says, but not one of the men who saw my glory in, um, in the miraculous signs I performed in Egypt and in the desert, um, but who disobeyed me and tested me 10 times, not one of them will ever see the land I promise on oath to their forefathers. No one who has treated me with contempt will ever see it. But because my servant Caleb has a different spirit, <laughs> I got to read that again in verse 24. But because my servant Caleb has a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly, I will bring him into the land he went to and his descendants will inherit it. Um, and basically he told their butts, turn back and go back into toward the desert. And you guys know that part when they was in the desert, I think for 40 years or so. He said, take your butts back to the desert. And in verse 28, so I tell them as surely as I live declares the Lord, I would do to you the very things I've heard you say. Uh Oh, so since you don't believe me, let me, let me jump up to verse 26. 
follow me and I apologize if I'm rambling a bit too much. I hope I'm not confusing you. But again, I'm, I'm getting pumped as I'm reading this, but I want you to get the gist of this. OK, so verse 26, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, how long will this wicked community grumble against me? I have heard the complaints of these grumbling Israelites. So tell them, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very things I heard you say. So in other words, you saying I won't deliver you into this land. You, 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 you saying that we're going to die out here in the desert. OK, I'm, I'm going to do as you say, since you don't believe me and all the things I've done and all the things I've pulled you through in life over and over and over again when I've rescued you. Now, here we are. And you're treating me with contempt again because you don't think I can do the impossible because they look big in your eyes. You don't think I can pull you through what you're going through right now? Okay, so I'm going to do, I'm gonna do with what I heard you say. Because that's, that's what he's saying. Read it for yourself. Read Numbers 14. Tell me if you disagree. That's what it's saying. <sighs> Lost my train of thought. But anyway, verse 28. So tell them, as surely as the Lord live, I, de I uh, declare to the Lord, I would do to you the very things I heard you say. In this desert, your bodies will fall. Every one of you, 20 years or more, who has counted in the census and who has grumbled against me, but not one of you will enter the land I swore with uplifted hand to make your home, except Caleb. And and I'll, I'll just stop there because um, this is just so, so juicy. If I keep reading, I'll have you guys on this podcast for about the next hour or two, which I can do with no problem, by the way. But I try to make it a little shorter because... I don't know, um, majority of people are just not able to listen to a lot at one time for whatever reason. But anyway, read the rest of that story, read what happened beforehand, read what I just read, and then read the rest of it. I think by now you get the point. Oh, and then, of course, later, of course, God did deliver um, that land uh, to them as he promised, but not to the ones who didn't believe, not to the ones who grumbled, not to the ones who thought it was impossible. So let me just wrap this up really quickly. And it's a very simple wrap up. One, always do what God told you to do. Two, when God has put something in your heart, and if you have other people, and it does not mean that they're evil, I want to make that really clear, but they don't see the vision, they don't feel it, they don't understand uh, how it can be done. If you allow yourself to be influenced by other people, please don't try to do anything great. Because in the face of greatness, there's always going to be a lot of opposition. I tell my staff all the time, and, and it's so funny, because every time I say this, they finish my sentence. I said, if it was easy, and then they say, I know, Z, everybody would be doing it. And I says, exactly, everybody would be doing it. Because the majority of the people go in one direction, and what they see other people do, they feel, oh, okay, it can be done. And if there's something that's not been done yet, the majority of the people are like, well, that can't be done. Nobody else is doing it. I believe wholeheartedly that there are some people out there listening or watching this podcast right now who has a vision, an idea, a dream, something. I don't know what it is, but you know, only you know. And you still have not taken that leap or done what you need to do because someone has been in your ear whispering, letting you know or telling you that it's impossible, it can't be done. And I just want to encourage you to read through this story and look at what happened to the people who listened to them and look at how God treated Caleb who basically said, I, I know what it looks like, but I also know what God has told me. And I also know the God that I, that I serve. You know, Caleb looked at it and saw it from a whole different angle, said they have no protection because he knew who he was. So that's how I live my life. You guys are still getting to know me. There's so many other layers you don't know yet, but that's how I live my life. I'm used to dealing with the impossible. I'm used to people telling me what can and can't be done. I'm used to it, but I'm also used to taking my butt back to God, getting on my knees in prayer, making sure that that's what he told me to do. I want to make that clear. And once he's given me a vision and told me to do something, no devil in hell can stop me. So I pray you're encouraged. And I pray you really do some reflection on this. I don't want to call it a lesson, um, but on this podcast and that you start taking a stand. Let me end with this. Cause I, I you know, I always kind of revert back to my son. Um, Life is so short, you guys. We're only here for a minute. Well, we're just a mist. The Bible says here today, gone tomorrow. So how long are you going to wait? And how much longer are you going to listen to one, someone tell you what's impossible? And for some of you, it's not someone else telling you. It's you convincing yourself something can't be done. Because you're looking at your bank account. You're looking at your schedule. You're looking at all your past failures. 
You're looking at the lack of support you have. Or in some cases, you're doubting your own talents and abilities. And I'm letting you know that that is a trick from the enemy. Pay careful attention to that story. That's why I love the Bible so much. I really, really do. Because everything in it is applicable. So I pray that this encourages you all. Um, Again, I just want to mention at my 100th episode, I just can't wait to announce to you all. um, Oh, my goodness, if you only knew what God put in my spirit, what he directed me to do. And you may not see it, but behind the scenes, I'm actually running. I'm running and preparing and getting things in place for what he has breathed on and showed me to do. And there's such a skip in my spirit that I today looked up at the sky and I says, God, I'm your servant. I love you so much. Thank you for using me to help change the world. That's just how excited I am about this next level that God is about to do in my life. And again, I have, I have not had, had, have had people in my life say it's impossible. It can't be done. What are you, what are you doing? So if you, if you, if you experience that, you just say, well, watch me anyway. Uh, Let me mention my community text number is 847. I hope I get this right because I always have to pause 648-9118. That's my community text number. Text me so that I can keep you posted on what's going on. And I think that's it because I talked a lot this time. Anyway, love you all. This is Z with Unlocking Greatness Podcast. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Thanks for listening. This is Z with Unlocking Greatness Podcast. Please don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the notification button. Love you all. Bye-bye.